Ukrima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Shomalikai. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to speak about the crisis of electoralism. Do you have a civic duty to vote in South Africa today? Part one. So Raymond, what evidence do you have that a significant number of people will choose not to vote? Well, when you read uh, media or speak to people, a lot of people say to me, who is there to vote for? You know, I voted for the ANC in the first elections, but now I can't possibly vote for them. They're all crooks and things like that. Or I never bring myself to vote for the DA. And these other parties, they crooks or they racists or whatever it is. You hear that very often. And the statistics show that um, quite a lot, the, the less people percentage-wise who are voting in 2019 than in the 1994 elections. And it's mainly amongst the youth that there's this decline. The youth are not registering to vote. And even if they do register, a lot of people are not voting. So I hear that. And I think it puts people in a difficult situation because the the vote was a hard one, right? And uh, there's a lot of pressure from some people like the IEC to do to give your vote. However, people are not sure who to vote for, whether there's someone to vote for. And you've got more more people on the vote on the ballot box than ever before. And many of these are just born overnight, these parties. Please can you explain to us why you place more weight on the words universal, adult, and suffrage. Now, I put a lot of weight on those words. Now, we did fight for the vote, but within the vote, the words are very significant. Universal relates to the previous interview we had about xenophobia, that the notion of freedom that we had was applicable to every single person in South Africa. You know, in this country, sometimes when there's xenophobia, people attack Shangan or Tsonga people, and everyone, everyone, one person, one vote means every. In this case, it's citizen. Every citizen of South Africa is allowed to vote. It's not a xenophobic reason for restricting the vote to citizens. So universal applies like freedom does to everyone in South Africa. So the word universal was important. I leave suffrage, it's obvious it just applies to f- franchise, but adult is important. Under apartheid, but you can still see it today, a lot of whites refer to black people but especially Africans as boys or girls. Where I stay, someone talks to me about the garden boys who come here. Now, these so-called boys are 40, 50, 60, you know, this sort of age. So this racism is part of a discourse that was from being on for centuries where Africans were referred to as a sort of child race. They never achieved adulthood whereas a white was born an adult. So that's why those words are very important. And we have to recognize that when we achieved freedom, we achieved adulthood. Now, it's sometimes expressed in patriarchal type terms, like achieving our manhood. But, you know, if you break down why people attached it to manhood and one man, one vote, Men were not able to protect their homes, being the strongest person, not necessarily patriarchal in the home, but they were not able, they were denied that right because of apartheid power. So the way it was expressed was often in masculinist terms, which didn't necessarily connote with patriarchy. It did often, but I mean, I'm saying they they separate questions. And why do you criticize the Independent Electoral Commission's rationale for voting? You know, it's a rationale in theory that you vote if you want to change things and you want to decide the direction of the country. But when you go and put that X next to this or that party, what do you have in your mind? To have it translated into 
change that you want to see is a long, complicated process. First of all, you're voting for a party and an MP that you may never see, uh, or MPs you will never see, even if it's a constituency system. You will, you don't, you don't. Britain, they also complain; they don't see them. In the United States, they don't see them. Secondly, to make a change, it has to go from a proposal of a party leader into a process of becoming legislation. That means lots of committees, advisors, all sorts of things. And by the time it happens or doesn't happen, it's a lot of time that's passed and it can be deflected because you, when experts come into it, people who are not connected with the vote that you cast, uh, when experts come into it, it can make a change, which is not what you wanted when you voted. And lastly, if you say the vote is a fundamental right, so why do you say the vote is not always valuable? Well, in a, in under apartheid, uh, first coloured and Indians were given the vote. Uh, well, it was taken away. They were given it in 1910, but it was taken away. Certain categories of coloured and Indians. But later in the tricameral parliament and the Bantustans, uh, black people, that's Africans, coloured and Indians, were given the vote, but they were valueless votes. They were puppet structures. The real things happened in the white parliament. So that's why people boycotted votes, especially after the UDF in 1983-84. There were boycotts of tricameral parliaments, and there was ongoing uh, opposition to the Bantu stunts, especially so-called independent Bantu stunts. Uh, although there was debate within the ANC and other organizations, you have people like Walter Sisulu writing an article from prison saying, look, how can we say to people they shouldn't get involved in the Bantustans when MK is not there to be able to assist them? It doesn't mean they were not there at all. People like Sisulu were very um, flexible in the sense that if it was not possible to do something and there was a gap there, maybe it was an idea to work within those structures. And it was quite controversial and it continued to be. But generally, those votes were not valuable. But today, people are asking, what is the value of my vote? If I vote for the ANC and they chow the uh, money that they get for state things or they use it to get contracts for their friends, what's the value of it? So you have a situation today where although the vote is said to be a civic duty, if I say I'm not going to vote, people say to me, you are a former leader, people see you as a public figure, how can you say on policy that they shouldn't vote? You're setting a very bad example, you should encourage everyone to vote. Now, I'm not going to declare uh, what I'm going to do. I may spoil my paper, I may vote for someone, I may not go to the ballot box. I can't say because of the queues, because as you get older, they put you in the front of the queue. Um, so what I'm saying is my vote is my secret, but my right is to vote, stay away, spoil my paper, all sorts of things. That's part of your right to vote. But it's a pity if we conclude as many people are concluding now that there's no real choice. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Prima Media's polity about the crisis of electoralism. Do you have a civil duty to vote in South Africa today? Part one.